all over the building put praise in the atmosphere. Oh, Lord, we invite you in. Lord, Lord, you are welcome here. You are welcome. Come on, somebody. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Somebody just shout, he is worthy to be praised. Lord, we thank you for another day's journey. Lord, we thank you that things are as well as they are. Is there anybody in the building who has come for life? Trouble don't last always. Give God a praise for victory. Give God a praise for breakthrough. Give God a praise. Yeah. Trouble won't. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. If you know that, say it, say it. Come on. Trouble don't last. Come on, trouble don't last. Trouble don't last. Trouble don't last. Trouble don't last. Come on.
his crises to the Christ and he asked Jesus to come and handle his dying daughter. Jesus said yes, okay, cool, go on. I'm coming home with you. In the middle of Jairus' crises, there was a challenge. Challenges in verses 25 through 34, where her delivery was delayed. I'm sorry, Jairus' daughter's delivery was delayed because this woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And I told you last week that delay does not mean denial. That the challenge of Christendom is when you have a crisis, is to be patient and wait on God until your change comes. But that's hard, it's, it's difficult. And when, I, and, 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 and when I went back over the text, I discovered uh, Deacon Rico, I, I discovered that J. Iris really can't blame this woman for the delay. Because when I looked at it afresh, when I looked at it anew, I discovered that her miracle came without Jesus stopping. In other words, the, the woman got the miracle when she touched his garment. Because Jesus said, he left it on record, virtue has left me. So Jesus didn't have to stop and delay his, his uh, coming to Jairus' house. And so I put my thinking cap on. I said, I wonder why did he delay it? The Lord told me to tell you that he delayed his journey because everything wasn't about Jairus. He delayed his journey and he stopped when he really didn't have to because this woman wanted a private miracle. 
She wanted to just ease in the crowd. She wanted to come in unbeknownst to anybody else. But Jesus said, yes, I'm going to give you a miracle, but it won't be private. It's going to be public. And sometimes God allows us to go through stuff just so that he could give us a public miracle. And when he gives you the public deliverance, the public miracle, then, and maybe then, you will, then if you don't give God some praise, at least the crowd will. And so in verse 34, Jesus is talking to this woman who had just stole some virtue from him and it had gotten in her. And he says, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace thy, and be whole of thy disease or thy plague. And then we want to pick up in verse 35 because the challenge is over. Now we into the catastrophe. And this is where we left off last week, verse 35. And while he yet spoke, look at the text. I want I see Jesus, I want X and G. And look at the text. He says, while he yet spake, meaning Jesus. Who was he speaking to? He was speaking to this woman who had interrupted his journey to J. Iris' house. He, he's talking to her. And while he's talking to her, there comes a messenger from J. Iris' house. Lord, help me teach this like I feel it. And here's my first point. And now notice, notice what the messenger says in verse number 35. While he yet spake, there came the ruler of the synagogue, how certain which said, thy daughter is dead, why troubleth thou the master in it further? Here's, what, here's my first, because what I want to do today is give you four life lessons from the remainder of this text. And the first life lesson, write this down because this will help somebody this week. The first life lesson is uh, don't listen to bad advice. Let me say it again. Let me put it another way. Don't listen to ungodly advice. Check this out. Because who you listen to oftentimes, what, write this down, what I listen to what I, the voice that I listen to will determine my victory. Okay, I wish I had about 25 of y'all that would understand whose voice, Pastor, why do you say that? Because faith coming, how? Everybody say by hearing. And so if faith coming by hearing, what you hear, what voice you are listening to will determine your victory. And there are two voices in this text. Two different voices talking to this man. One is talking about faith. The other voice is talking about foolishness. Check out, check, uh, uh, check out the text. He, he said, notice, notice, notice what the messenger says, and and and, and, and his voice is is um, is twofold. First of all, he brings an accurate report. Look at the text. While he yet spake, there came. From the ruler of the synagogue, a certain which said, that check this out, that daughter is dead. Everybody say that's a fact. Come on, y'all ain't helping me. Everybody say that's a fact. He reported what he knew to be factual, and that is your daughter. You went to Jesus to get him to come and heal your daughter, and, and in between, you're going to get him, and Jesus coming back, your daughter. Dead. Now, I, I, I don't have a problem, Brad. I, I don't have a problem taking it to a part. I don't have a problem with the report because he's only reporting the truth. Now, there are some religions that tell you, when, uh, when the doctor you tell you you got cancer, you deny you got it, the devil is alive. The doctor, when the doctor told me I had cancer, I said, cool, doctor. Now, what's we going to do? Now, what are we going to do about it? I mean, because you look like a fool talking about you don't have cancer, but going to treatment every week. Facts are what they are. But how many people in here know when you've been born again, when you're saved, when you're sanctified, when you've been filled with the Holy Ghost? Faith does not care what the facts say. Because faith is able to look beyond the facts. Fact is, God told you you sick. Faith says by his stripes, I'm already here. 
Faith says you're going to always be the tail. I'm sorry. Fact said you're going to always be the tail. Mama wasn't no good. Daddy wasn't no good. Grandmama wasn't no good. Wasn't nobody in your family the good. You ain't going to be no good. But faith said, I was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. Facts say that you will never get your life together. But faith said, with God, all things are possible. The facts said they are no longer going to take a partial payment on the bill. But faith said, if I just hold on and wait for my change to come, God is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above which are both the all above that which we can ask for faith. When I get that, can I get about five folk in here to wave your hand and say, I'm not looking at the facts. I got no problem. I, I, I have no problem running down there with, uh, with the fact, but I'm not looking at the fact. I'm walking by faith, not by sight. And I ought to have my ten of y'all here to know it ain't over until God says it's over. First of all, first of all, Dr. Holloway, there's the report. And the report is actual. She is dead. Got no problem with the report, but I got a problem with the recommendation. Remember now, Jesus is going to Jairus' house. He's been, he's been interrupted, and 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 he now he's being told, Jairus, you know, that she did it. That's the report. Now watch the recommendation. The recommendation freaks me out. Notice what the messenger said. Give up on God. Make, look, look, look at the text. He said, "Thy daughter is dead." Why are you bothering the Lord anymore? There's nothing he can do. Give up on your destiny. Give up on your life. Give up on your plan. Give up on everything you've always wanted. God, why? Because God did not come through. I ought to have a few people in here that have gone through some hell in your life. And the devil whispered in your ear, give up on God. But do I have about five of y'all that, that can shout this morning and tell the devil you are a liar? I may be hurting. I may be going through pain. It hurts like hell. But I will never. Put somebody say you give up on God. Your child died and the devil told you, Priscilla, give up on God. It was pitiful. It was painful. But you hung in there. And I ought to have about ten and a half of y'all more who have lost some loved one. And the devil told you, if God doesn't love you, God doesn't care about you. If I were you, I would give up on God. But you dried the tears out of your eyes. And you mustered up enough strength, Edna, when your grandchild died, to tell the devil you are for God I live for God this foolish talk y'all remember Job don't you Job lost everything wife came to him and said look at you 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 are you still being true to God if I had been Job I'd say uh huh She said, now know what this foolish talk does. I'm telling y'all, hear my point. Be careful with what foolish voice you listen to this week. Woman said, why don't you curse God? And Mary Ann and Mary, Bunny, y'all check it out. Look at what Joe White told him. Joe said, if I were you, I would curse God. I would roll over and die. Uh, Notice what she didn't tell him. Let's curse God and let us roll over and die. She was telling Job, I, Job, you go on and die. I'm going to stay here. The devil is a liar. You see, people will push you over the cliff while they still standing on the top of the mountain. Talking about, child, if I were you, do I have about two and a half of y'all that, uh, uh, that don't mind telling them, you ain't me? I don't walk. <laughs> I don't walk by the facts. I walk by. Point one, listen to the right voice. Recommended, she said, if I were you, I'd just curse God. 
And Joe said, what are you? You talk like a fool. He said, naked I came. Come on, help me now. Naked I came in this world. Naked, I'm on. Leave Number one, this voice was telling Jake Iris to give up on God. That's the message. Everybody say the message. But in verse 36, we see the master's voice. Listen, as soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, what word? She did. Give up. Jesus said to J. Iris, check this out, don't be afraid. Only believe. Don't, don't, don't be afraid. Check this out. Surround yourself with people who know how to encourage you. Get rid of people who never lift you up. Who never had a compliment. Surround, surround yourself with people who, when you're going through, they're going to be telling you something about, yeah, uh, my grandmama had that, and she died in 18 minutes and 21 seconds. Don't nobody need to hear that. I need to hear trust in the Lord and lean not unto thine own understanding. I need to hear, Pastor, hang on in there. Because I declare the Lord will make a way somehow. I need to hear I'm on your side. I need to hear I'm praying for you. I need to hear God still is in the miracle. Check this out. Tell you when you won't when you can't find anybody else to give you some encouraging words. Please learn how to encourage yourself. Please learn how to lift you up. Just the other day, just the other day, Snoop, I was watching the Olympics and Simone Bow was about to do the, the ball, I mean, whatever she does. And for those of you who don't know that is, she's an Olympic and Olympic gold med medalist. The person who has won more gymnastic medals than anybody else. Last time they had the Olympics, she had a mental disturbance and quit in the midst of competition. This year, I saw her getting ready to do the whatever that little horse is. And let me tell you what she did. Uh, Big Miss Allen, before she took off, she took a deep breath. <sighs> you see, sometimes you got to learn to exhale. I said, sometimes you gotta learn to just take a. And before she went and performed her uh, 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 Olympic event, she took a deep breath. And the camera caught her saying these words. You She went the third person. She didn't say, Rico, I got this. She had learned how to encourage herself. And instead of saying, you got, instead of saying, I got this, she learned how to put herself outside of herself and encourage herself. And she said, you got this. I need about 30 of y'all that will just give a shout to your, to give a shout to God because you learn how to encourage yourself. Can I get about ten and a half of y'all that know how to encourage yourself when you're down, when you're out, when you got the blues and you can't find your wife, you can't find your husband, and you can't find your friend. You learn how to look in the mirror and do like this bow said and said, you got this. If you are not too mean, 
If you're not too mean, if you're not too mean, and if you're not too low down, you don't mind encouraging yourself. Get on your feet and give God a praise because I know, I know how to encourage myself. If you're not too mean, would you shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, excuse me, neighbor, I don't mean to be arrogant, and I don't mean to be selfish, but I learned how to encourage myself. To pick myself up, turn myself around, and if I'm preaching about you, would you pat yourself on the chest and say, "You got this"? Let give God a praise and praise. Listen to the right voice. If I say listen to the right voice, some of y'all mean as a snake. If I say listen to the right voice, get the story. Jay Iris has come to get Jesus. Jesus on the way. The woman interrupts him, and now he gets the bad news. The child is dead, but now he has two voices, and he listens to the right voice because now they continue on their way. Number two, number two, this is going to help y'all this way. Not only do you listen to the right voice, number two, you got to leave some Negroes behind. 
Okay, Pastor, how you gonna get that? How you gonna exegete the text and get me behind? Look at verse number 37. And he suffered no man to follow him other than Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Okay, go back to verse 21. And when Jesus was passed over again by the ship of the other side, much, if I say much people. So these are the much people along with the nine that he left behind. Check this out. God sent me down here to tell somebody, or at least on Facebook, everybody can't go with you into your destiny. Where you are going, you are going to have to allow him to take some people out of your life because they are dead weight. They are not designed to go any further with you. People are like seasons. There are some clothes, they are like clothes and seasons. You don't take every clothes into every season, so you don't take everybody into every season you're going through. You don't wear an overcoat in the summer, and you don't wear sandals in the winter, but some of you, God has given you overcoat people for winter, and you try to take them into your summer season. He, he, he told them, y'all got to stay here. Because, see, I've learned that you can't take everybody everywhere. But, beloved, and you can't tell everybody everything. Some folk, you can tell anything. You ain't going to tell nobody. Other folk, you can tell a little. Some folks like an ice park, you can't tell them nothing. Peter, James, and John were Jesus' trick. He took, he took them to places he didn't take everybody else. Leave them well. And see, check this out. Check this out. I heard Tanya say this years ago. She says, all separations are permanent. Sometimes I, I, sometimes you gotta get rid of people for a season. Because they are not designed for this season in my life. It's not that I don't like you, it's not that we still ain't bosom buddy, but you are not good for this season in my life. I'm trying to go to a new level. I'm thinking up here and you thinking down here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of uh, 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 AI and you still on AM. Artificial intelligence. Ain't Number one, let me hurry this up. Number one, check this out. Listen to the right voice. Y'all, y'all got that. Number two, leave some folk behind. I tell you what, let me go here first. Number three, let some folk go. Go to go to verse forty. Let some folk go. Now, now, what's the difference? Some folk you got to leave when you start. Got to leave them behind. Other folk, when you get to your destiny, you got to put them out. Okay, y'all ain't talking like I, like like y'all. Other folk, you got to once you get there, you got to clean house. Know the difference. Some of them you got to leave when you start. Others, when you get to your destiny. You got to look, look at verse 40, and he took the, I'm sorry, verse 40, and they laughed at the scorn, but when he had what? Put them all out. Everybody say, put them all out. If you are not, if you are not joining in with my vision, I got to put you out. If you are not looking for the same thing I'm looking for, I got to put you out. If you are not going in the same direction that I'm going, if you ain't encouraging me, if you ain't a positive influence in me, if you are not something positive in my life, I got to put you out. Evangelist, I saw text the other day that I wish I had thought of it. 
It said this, and don't y'all ever forget this, and I'm almost finished. It said, if I made it through the toughest time of my life without you, don't you know I don't need you? It said, if I could make it through the toughest time of my life, and you want to act like I need you, if I didn't need you then, You see, cause folk will make you think that they uh, that you need them. Come on, talk to me. Folk will make you think that 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 you can't make it without them. But I'll have my forty of y'all who have made it through the fire without them. If I could make it through the fire back then without you, before I even knew you, I know I could make it now. Ooh, I'm preaching that man, y'all receiving it. He says, y'all. Y'all get out. Let some go. Point one, listen to the right voice. Point two, what? Leave some behind. Point three, let some go. Here's my final point. And I'm going to get him up. Check this out. Look at the situation through his eyesight. Look at the situation. Now, what's the difference? Let's go back to verse number. 36. Are y'all in the house? Yeah. Am I helping anybody? Yeah. Okay. Verse 36. It says, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler, I'm sorry, verse 35. He yet spoke that came a ruler of the synagogue's house, a certain which said, thy daughter is dead. Give up. Don't bother the Lord no more. You can't depend on God. Now, that's his view. See, everybody ain't going to share your view. Everybody ain't going to see what you see. Check out Jesus' view. Jesus says, so in verse 38, when he had come, so he finally gets to the house. All that was before he got to the house. He had, Jairus had come, and Jesus said, okay, I'm coming. And the woman had come, and she had got healed. And he went through all this, so Jesus finally arrived. Everybody say he finally arrived. Now, now, look, look, now look at what happened. Verse 38. And he comes to the house of the rule of the synagogue and see if the tomb did and them that weep and well, great. Uh, in, in Jewish culture, they hired people to cry. They hired people to play music. They, they hired people to just holler at a funeral. So what they were doing was they were at the funeral but had gone to the burial. Okay? They were preparing to bury this child. <laughs> And when he was come in, now see y'all don't know when to shout because when he when he come in, y'all should have shouted that why? Because when he shows up, he always shows out. And see the reason some of y'all can't shout because he showed up for J. Iris because you can't shout when he shows up for anybody other than you. Check this out. So Jesus said, "Why y'all? Why y'all making all that noise?" In other words, Jesus is saying, from your perspective, you preparing for a burial. I'm preparing for a resurrection. <laughs> you preparing for her to stay dead. I'm preparing for her to get up. Can I ask you, what are you preparing for? Let me help somebody here. Verse 39. And when he was come in, he said unto them, Why well, make you ado and cry? He says unto them, The damsel is not dead. Now, 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 I promised a young lady, she's not here today, but maybe she'd get on Facebook that I will get to this. Jesus said she is not dead, but sick. Now, I, 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 I need y'all to understand something about death. Um, there are three kinds of death. Number one, there is physical death. This is what you see when your loved one or your enemy <laughs> is laying in the casket. Everybody say that's physical death. The word death means something is separated. Physical death is when 
your spirit is separated from your body. I preach a sermon called Don't Die Dead. And that seems like a contradictory, it seems like an oxymoron, but the fact of the matter is you can die physically and already be spiritually dead. If death means separated, then what spiritual death? That's when you are unsaved. That's when you're not born again. That's when you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And see, we cry and boo-hoo and cut food when somebody dies physically. But the greatest tragedy is when you die spiritually. And when you die physically. That's why we pray for our loved ones that we know they live in any kind of way. Because we believe that they are spiritually dead and we don't want them to have a wreck or get shot or die while they are spiritually dead and then they die and then they are already spiritually dead, then they will be eternally dead. Make it plain, Pastor. If you die spiritually dead, you will be eternally separated from God. And that's why we as preachers need to get back to getting people saved. We need to make sure y'all, before we shout y'all, before we tell y'all how to get y'all husband and how to get your wife and how to get your car and how to get out of debt and how to get your skin clean as a baby's butt, uh, 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 we need to go back to teaching you all how to be saved. Because if you die physically while you are unsaved, you will spend eternity in hell. Woo! Well, y'all got mad quiet. Let me explain. Let me show you. Go to John chapter number 11. I believe I will. Because I don't want y'all to die dead. And I don't want you to fear a friend because your loved one has died. All right. John chapter 11. This is the story of Lazarus. Are y'all in the house? Y'all know Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. He had two sisters, Mary and Martha, and Lazarus died. All right, now here it is. I want you to first of all look at, uh, da, 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 there it is, right here. Right here, verse number one says, a certain man was sick, say Lazarus was sick. Now go to verse number 11. These things he said, after that he said, our friend Lazarus is asleep. Okay, so Lazarus was, first of all, what? If I say sick, secondly he was what? Sleep, now go to verse 14. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is what? Now today, hold on a minute. Wait, 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 wait. But is, is he asleep or is he dead? Because when you go to a funeral, you generally hear preachers say, he ain't dead, he's asleep. That's a lie, he's dead. He dead as dead can be. He, ain't, he may not be spiritually dead, he may not be eternally dead, but he is physically what? So, Pastor, that y'all listen to me stop lying, talking about they ain't dead. Jesus clearly says in verse 14, Lazarus is what? Dead. In other words, his spirit is separated from his body. Okay? Now, go down to verse number, uh, verse 25. Am I helping in anybody? Verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, check this out, though he were, what kind of death? If I say physical. If though he were physically dead, yet shall he live again. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never spiritually die and eternally die. He says, if you believe in me, you still gonna die physically. What he telling them is, and this is good news, as my mama is about 100 yards to the, I don't know whether they did north, south, either way, whatever it is, mama in the graveyard. And I decided one day I was gonna go out and visit mama grave. Mama been there about two or three years, give me some salt. And uh, I was on my way to, to visit mama grave, and, um, Spirit told me, he said, where you going? I said, I'm going to visit Mama Gray. And Spirit said, she ain't getting that. Spirit said, your mama ain't in that. 
your mama with me. To be absent, come on, in the body, is to be present. With Stop turning around. I, didn't, now, 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 I ain't got no problem with y'all going to visit your mama, your granny, your children, great, because my family come and camp out there. I mean, they put a, 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 a they bring food and chairs, and they just bring it all, a, 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 a rent a, rent a, rent a portable, Toilet, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but I mean, they just camp out down there. So I'm not telling you not to go to your loved one grave, but I do want you to understand, they ain't there. Ain't nothing there but a body. What am I saying? Jesus comes, he put the folk out. He goes into the little girl and he takes her by hand. And he says, to Luther Kuma, he says, daughter, get up. And the Bible says she got up. Why, why that good news? Because I'm going to see mama again. You're going to see your loved one again. If they die in Jesus. And then Jesus said this. Uh, oh, let me tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said, now, feed that baby. He said, give her something to eat so that all these folk know that I got power to turn your situation around. That's it. Let me give you the points again and then we go. Listen to the right voice. Leave some folk behind. Let some folk go. Finally, look at the situation from his perspective. That's it. Y'all give God a hand clap of praise. If you enjoy the Lord, give him a hand clap of praise in the house. Come on if you enjoyed it. And give, if you didn't enjoy the word, still give him a hand clap of praise. Because he's worthy.